Hey, white women. I know y'all are getting real excited about the um, man versus bear conversation. It's, but, you know, I, I get it. But I just, I just want us to sit in our hut of humility real quick and know that this is the same thing, same-ish thing as me asking, hey, black women, hey, you're at work and you're alone in a room. Who would you rather walk in right now? You don't know what it is, a white man or a white woman. You're in a conference room alone. You have to be with one or the other. Which one is it going to be? Now, be careful how you feel about this, because how did man feel when we picked bear? Okay? All right, women? I just, I just want us all to just be in our, in our, in our proper placement. I love, I love the conversation. I just, you know, you know what I'm here for. That's it. One of my favorite creators on this app, White Woman Whisper, posed a sub question to the man versus bear question, which was, black women, you are alone in a conference room. Who do you want to walk in? A white man or a white woman? And the answer overwhelmingly has been white man. And there are a lot of white women in the comments, angry, vitriolic, that she dared pose this question, that the answer dare be men instead of women, because we want to think of ourselves as better, right? I just want to ask you, I want to invite you to this. If you are mad about that question, if you are feeling vitriolic about people saying that white women are doing as much harm as white men, where do you feel that in your body? Where is that coming up for you? If you are angry about this, if you are feeling powerful emotions about that, where are you feeling that? Because that is where you are holding misogyny and racism in your body. And deconstruction is not just a matter of the mind. It's a matter of processing it in your body. That's an invitation to learn about yourself. I need the white ladies to circle up because we need to have a team meeting. Somehow it was very obvious to most of y'all why women were choosing the bear over a man. We've all had a circumstance with a man that made us uncomfortable. I'm an avid hiker. I've been in the woods with both men and bears. Neither one of them have harmed me, though at no point have I ever been scared of a bear. But I have had very real reasons to feel very nervous about some of the men I've been in the woods with. I don't understand why white women aren't understanding the parallels that this has to women of color and the way they might feel about us. Other circumstances they would choose the bear over being with white women. At least in my mind, in the bear versus man analogy, man doesn't just represent the possibility of SA, but a whole host of scenarios in which that man could cause us harm on many different levels. Um, and white women, we have done the same thing to women of color, to people of color. Just like we are having a response to men that cannot understand, that are calling us crazy for choosing the bear, what we want them to do is listen listen is the next right thing for men to do because women have very real reasons for choosing the bear. White women, the very next step for us is to listen. There are very real reasons why black women are pointing out the harms and the real fear they have that are substantiated. All the things men are doing to us, we are now doing to women of color. Telling them the analogy doesn't line up, telling them their fears are unsubstantiated, telling them they're crazy for making this comparison. They are not crazy. They are telling us important things, things that we desperately need to learn. And the only way things are going to get better is if we take a seat and get humble and listen. Okay, so you heard from three different women. The original creator that posed this spinoff of the question, would women in general choose a man or a bear if they're in the woods? And then we have this spinoff question of black women. Hey, would you choose, if you're in the corporate setting, a white woman or a white man to come into the conference room, assuming, right, we assume we don't know who the person is. This is very general. Well, obviously in the woods, the first thought would be safety and it's direct physical safety is what I would think of. In the corporate setting, that's a different type of safety that I think of. So when I put myself into the conference room and I think of who I'd rather be faced with. When I think of the white man and the threats, what came to mind in the first couple of seconds were mansplaining and being overlooked. The things that came to mind with the white woman were manipulation, mental games, microaggressions, and job loss. Way more significant to me is mental games, microaggressions, job loss. 
These are things that play on my mental safety and also economical, physical safety with the impact of a job loss. I have to point out, these are not fears that I've made up from TV or watching other people. These are fears that I would have based on my own personal experiences working with both white men and white women. Once I actually looked at the TikTok videos of other Black women talking about their experience in corporate and who they would choose, the threats were very similar specifically job loss and dealing with mental games and microaggression. Uh, I even saw women mentioning white woman tears. So let's look at a few examples. You, you don't know what it is, a white man or a white woman? You're in a conference room alone. A white man every single time. There's never been anything more detrimental to my career than a white woman. I'm choosing a white man every time. It's at work. Is it work setting? White man. Absolutely. 110% without a doubt. Women, would you rather be in a, a conference room with a white woman or a white man? Um, and a lot of the consensus is that we would rather be in a room with a white man. And it's because, you know, white men are more blatant, just like racism in the South is like less tricky than racism in the North. They still, it's still racism. And so for me, I've worked in, y'all here, I've worked in fashion. Um, for 12 years, I went to school with all white women after, uh, for, in college, um, and I grew up in all black neighborhoods. So that was a huge culture shock. Um, but I will say that I agree and I have, I have best friends that are white. I have, you know, coworkers that I've taught. I learned so much from so many people who I, who I very deeply and intimately appreciate. However, there are so many, even the most people with the well intentions have so many blind spots. And I just think I had to come to the conclusion that I just don't trust white women unless they earn my trust. And I feel like I'm the opposite with black women. Like I'm like, I, with most people, you know, like I'm a very trusting person. Maybe that's my naivete. Maybe that's my ADHD. But with white women, there's always a bit of a and when I look back at my career and who is who is with me the most, it could just be proximity. But um, is white women or is people who um, align with whiteness? I really appreciate this creator for making this video for a lot of different reasons and acknowledging how I've been feeling for quite some time as someone who escaped a toxic workplace that was um, due to bullying by white women in corporate America. And ironically enough, one of the best bosses I've ever had in my life was a white man in corporate America. I've had great white women too, but like more often than not, not really. With that said, I've been doing a lot of thinking as to why I think white men and black women, not only in dating make great couples, but also with white men um being like their leader their boss their team lead why it's not as toxic as white women and hear me out but i think it's because white men just simply know their place in society is always going to be number one they know that they're always going to get the job over anyone else they know that they're always going to be seen as like the ideal candidate the ideal working person no matter what and i've been thinking that simply like the existence of a black woman on their team, even if she's a gunner, even if she's going after everything, is never going to threaten him. Like he's non-threatened, meaning that he can give away every resource from mentorship to sponsorship to accolades. And he's still going to be ahead of her, which is why he's able to give those things without feeling like it's ever going to take away from him. And specifically, I think white women or we've also black women have had horror stories with other black women is that it feels like the person who is our leader who's supposed to uplift us and give us access and mentorship and sponsorship again when they're doing it i feel like they feel like it's taking away from their career or their essence so they hold those opportunities back they hold the praise back they hold the promotions back they hold the role changes back because they want it for themselves. And I feel like white men don't do that because they don't have to do it because they will always get it. Even if they give that one opportunity to the, to the next black girl, they know that their next opportunity is going to be equal and 
likely better just because of their position in society. And I think we should like really explore this a little bit more about who we're working for and what they're going to be able to offer us. Because like for me right now, as someone who is like transitioning careers, I'm specifically looking for a team lead or mentor um, who is going to be able to open up doors for me. And if that's not something that you can do, I don't really want to work for you. For my audio listeners, the first comment from a black woman is the bear over corporate white woman. The creator responds, this is the correct answer. A second black woman here comments the white man every single time. White women tears end careers every single time. The creator responds every time. Ended mine recently referring to her career. Bill may make microaggressions, but he'll go to bat for you. Karen will tell you to your face that it's crazy how they talk to you and then be the one to get you fired. The creator responds with, that's exactly what happened to me. Next comment says, white man for sure, but ages 40 to 50. The next commenter says, they don't feel threatened by us and they admire our tenacity, referring to white men. Another comment says, women bosses in general are not supportive to other women. You explain this well and I agree. Another commenter says, my white male manager was always in all caps advocating for me and helped me get a raise while others were snakes. Someone else, um, a black woman, chooses the bear. Someone says they call it the Michael Scott effect, problematic as heck, but they tend to do the right thing. Someone else, most definitely man, I'll take Ken over Karen, but is the bear an option? So true, I had a white woman manager for five years and she refused to promote me. I had two white men managers and I received two promotions within two years. Someone else says, the white men were the chillest as managers. I know I can't speak for all, but in my experience, they made me more comfy and gave grace when mistakes were made. The creator agrees and says the same. Now we've heard from different black women via video and also comments. And I will say, I can relate to these things. I have multiple situations where I've worked with a white woman in a corporate setting and was made to feel uncomfortable, um, had a backstabbing incident was made to feel less than, et cetera, et cetera. I do want to point to one specific thing that it fears me in the workplace, and that is being made to look like the bad guy or the aggressor in different situations when directly working with white women. I've had instances of this. Now, without proof, typically the black woman is always seen as the aggressor. And reminder, I've worked in HR and recruiting. This happens within those departments heavily. Now, in this case with Marjorie Taylor Greene and Jasmine Crockett, you see Marjorie Taylor Greene or MTG verbally attacking Jasmine for her looks. We see Jasmine respond. But what I want to point to is the actions that happen after Jasmine does the same behavior in the fact that she now also verbally responds and what happens before and after that, right? Is Jasmine made to seem like an aggressor? Oh, things are, that is not okay now. Oh, calm down. You'll notice these things in the video. Yes. The hearing was supposed to be about Attorney General Merrick Garland's refusal to turn over audio tapes of President Biden's interview with the special counsel, with Republicans pushing he be held in contempt of Congress. It veered off course when Republican Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene made comments about Democrat Representative Jasmine Crockett's eyelashes. Do you know what we're here for? You know we're here about uh, just a, uh, I don't think you know what you're President. here for. Well, you the one talking about. I guess I, I think your fake eyelashes little. are messing up. No, what you're ain't leaving. nothing. Hold on, hold on. Listen. Order. Democrats then moved to censure Green. That is absolutely unacceptable. How dare you uh, 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 attack the physical Meeting appearance of suspend. another person? Are your Move feelings hurt? Her words down. Aww. Oh, oh, girl, baby, girl. Oh, really? Don't even. Play, baby girl. We're gonna, I don't think we are going to move and we're going to take your words down. Thank Crockett you. later fired back with her own personal insults as Chairman James Comer struggled to regain order. I'm just curious, just to better understand your ruling, if someone on this committee then starts talking about somebody's bleach blonde, bad built butch body, that would not be engaging in personalities, correct? A, a what now? Now we've seen the first video. Let's shift to the second. In this one, we will see how the right 
is portraying Jasmine. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that Jasmine's name is purposely misspelt, I believe. And if you think about it, the name Jasmine sounds like a typical American white woman name, honestly, or you may not know what the exact race is. But when you change the name, how they have changed it, it sounds, I will say, more ethnic. And I think this was done purposely. The second thing you will notice is the video is cut off right to the point where MTG has already insulted Jasmine and now she is upset. Any person when verbally attacked or insulted would be either emotional, upset, or show some form of energy towards that person. This is done purposely that they have cut the video right at this moment where you don't see what MTG has done, but you see that Jasmine is upset. And it goes right back to the statement I made before of someone doing something to a black woman. Then the black woman responds and now all of a sudden the black woman is made to be the bad guy, is told to calm down as you see in this video as well, where she's told she needs to calm down. Now, the last thing I'll point out is you'll note a couple of comments that refer to Jasmine in a certain stereotypical light, referring to her as ghetto. All these things I do want you to pay attention to in this video. You just first. voted to do it. Did it first, so you you just voted, voted to do it. it. Order, order. I'm trying to get okay. clarification. Look at calm down. Calm no, down. no, 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 because this I is what y'all do. So I'm trying hey, to get Ms. clarification. Miss Crockett, you're not recognized. Miss Crockett. I can't hear you with your and yelling. You don't want calm me to down. Be, no. Can you please calm don't down? Don't tell me to calm down. Calm down. Because y'all talk calm noise, down. and then you you're can't take it. You're out of control. Because if I, Look, come, chairman, if I come and talk shit about her, y'all gonna have a problem. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. All right, Chair, Chair, okay. Order. Chair now recognizes Miss Green for for four minutes and 21 seconds. Four minutes. Let Miss Green talk, and then you all can, I'll recognize but her. I, I moved to side. strike her words for a second time based on her second set of personal remarks attacking another member. Who? Chairman Comer. Because you all cannot see to the apply the, the rules of the committee. Stop. We have to do this every time. Hey, I, I, I'm recognized. Listen, look, I'm recognized. Order, order, I'm going to go I, ahead I, and start I, I, talking. Look, I, I know, I know. Look, I don't know if you've noticed it. I have two hearing aids. I'm very deaf. I'm not understanding. Everybody's yelling. I'm doing the best I can. Can we not recognize Ms. Green and let we her We cannot get? because of the rules of the committee, Mr. Chair. That is uh, that is what I'm trying to communicate in the present moment. We have a mo. Okay, what's the motion? What's the, the motion? Mo And now let's hear from Congresswoman Jasmine on her perspective and actually why things got to this point right before she was insulted by MTG. Don't come for me. Uh, <laughs> that, that is all that I need to tell her. Don't come for me. Listen, you know, we showed up ready to work and unfortunately we could not have our hearing at 11 o'clock, um, even though this is a pointless hearing and it's, and it's ridiculous in and of itself that we needed to have it. But we showed up. They're in the majority. They set the agenda. This is what they want to do. This is what they believe is a priority for the American people. And they decided that they would skip work and go to New York to be involved in Trump's trial. And so then we get back at 8 p.m. And instead of focusing on what the task at hand was, which was whether or not A.G. Merrick Garland was going to be held in contempt of Congress, Marjorie Taylor Greene started, talk started talking about Judge Mershon. Which is why I asked her, do you know why we're here? And ultimately, it devolved into the debacle that it did. And the chairman actually broke um, the agreement that he made, which was that she was to be held um, to have uh, her, her words taken down, which meant that she was then going to have to leave the committee, which would have helped everybody. Um, he decided to change his ruling. And I decided to inquire uh, through a point of inquiry about what could and couldn't be said. Now, what I also want to point to is there is someone that responds really well in these instances. It's a black woman. You may love her. You may hate her. 
But how she has responded in some cases, not every case, but certain cases with white women is done with such grace, poise, and professionalism. And you can tell that she's tooled to do this at this point. She's used to this and knows how to respond in a way that keeps her away from the stereotype. And she is able to highlight who is truly the aggressor in the situation. Now, these are political examples, and it's unfortunate that we have to play these political games in corporate America, especially as Black women. However, we can see from this video that Black women can use defensive tools and tactics to combat stereotypes and portray ourselves in a very positive way. And you see this Black woman remains calm, poised, feminine, and professional, all while putting the other woman on blast. To be back here at the Today Show. Nice to see you. I should let you know I am recording this conversation. Oh, very good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what a coincidence. A, yes, you brought us a new tape. Mm -hmm. um, the president, the day after you were fired, we just heard it. He says he didn't know about it. He doesn't like you leaving the White House. Is he lying in that tape? I'm not certain, but what's most concerning, one, why was I locked in the Situation Room for almost two hours? Why was I not allowed to leave? I'll get to the well, second part. Yeah. And lastly, when I asked to leave and I asked for counsel and I asked for my husband, why was I denied at least four times? When I spoke to him and he said he had no idea that should be alarming to any American, that the president of the United States does not know what's happening with an assistant okay, to the well, president who's known him for 15 years. Okay, but just to be, I mean, you brought the tape. You, Absolutely. Is he lying? Because yesterday you told Chuck on Meet the Press, you think he did know you were fired. Yes, because this there was... Right. This tape shows him saying, oh, I didn't know you were fired. Is he lying? Yes, because there were subsequent calls after that. Okay. There is a complete organization between the two of them. He probably instructed General Kelly to do it so that he could keep his hands clean when he spoke to me. I'm wondering, is he sincere? The other question is, is General Kelly running this country or is the president running this country? Because he said he didn't know and they run a big operation. Back Who to is the, the they? Issue. Wait, 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 Who is the they in the tape? You can't ask the question and then ask another question without my answer. You asked me, do you think he knows? The and you answer said you're is, not sure. I'm not certain. Here's the other part. Who's running this country? When Donald Trump says that they run a big operation, who is the they? Is General Kelly puppeting Donald Trump? Okay. Is he truly running this country instead okay. of the president? Do you think the president lies often? Oh, absolutely. In fact, there How was a report. How long have you known that? There was a report that said that he lied almost 4,000 lies in the last year. Have you known that he's, he is a liar, as you say? Well, absolutely. He Why tells did you work for him? Savannah, slow down. I'm going to ask your question. Don't worry, I'm here. I've got all the time. Yeah, no, but I'm. Yeah. So you don't have to ask 10 questions in one second. It's okay. First of all, he is known to be an entertainer, to exaggerate, but I never expected him to lie to the country. I thought that he would take his oath of office seriously, that he would be committed to advancing this country. But instead, as I stated, there was a report that said he has said something like 4,000 lies since he's taken office. So you've seen Omarosa, who was an American reality TV show participant, writer, and also a former political aide to both Bill Clinton and Donald Trump. I would love to hear your thoughts on her response and the overall video. And please do like this video, subscribe if you're not already, and hit the notification bell for more content.